Can you introduce about yourself? Ah uh, yes, sir. So first of all, sir, very good morning. Myself, Anil, and uh, thank you so much for providing me this opportunity. Uh, I belong to Satara district in Maharashtra state. So uh, in a in a cognizant, I was working from from last uh, three point five years as a quality software analyst. Mm -hmm. uh, in my in my career in my career in my in my career, I was work on our two projects. One is from a life insurance domain, and another is from a e-commerce domain. So I, I used to work on manual testing, automation testing, as well as uh, Cypress. So my roles and responsibilities is to uh, uh, understand the requirement from the clients, prepare the test cases according to that, and uh, uh, execute the test cases. And uh, I also used to perform the regression testing whenever it is needed. And uh, I, I also involved in uh, agile methodology uh, and the daily scrum calls, as well as the sprint planning meeting, sprint review meeting. So this is all about me, sir. Forty. Okay. So Amir, uh, how would you rate yourself in Java out of five? Uh, I will rate myself as a three point five to four, sir. Okay. Three point five. Five. So I will start with Java, and then we'll gradually move to Selenium, and I'll ask some questions from Manuel as well. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, what are the different access specifiers in Java? Uh, so there, there are basically four access specifiers in the Java, which are uh, public access specifiers, private, default, and uh, protective. Mm -hmm. So the the scope of the access specifier public is the throughout the project. The scope of the default access specifier and uh, protected access specifier is throughout the package, and the scope of the private uh, private access specifier is throughout the class. Okay, throughout the class. And uh, if I want to uh, like other than public. If I want to use any other specifier, which mm -hmm. uh, whose uh, scope is out of package, so uh, what I can do? I uh, means out of the package, sir. Uh, we can use the uh, default access specifier or private access specifier by you know by performing the return operation. Mm -hmm. So we can call the that particular package into another package by uh, by doing the return operation. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, uh, is it possible that I can access, uh, you know, methods or variables from one project to another project? Doing it uh, uh, using any specifier? Uh, yes, sir. It is the. Uh, uh, yes, sir. We can access the methods in the if the if the if the that uh, uh, like access specifier is the public or the, like you know uh, protected or default. Mm -hmm. We can call the methods in the different methods. Okay, so only we can do with public and protected, not default. Yes, sir. Ah, both will work. Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, what is static static pool area? Do you have any idea? Static pool area or heap area? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know about that. Uh, these are the areas which is present inside the heap area, and uh, these are the string a uh, string area basically. So, in static area and the static pool area, there are if we if we declare the vari two different variables by using the new keyword. Then it is uh, it is stored the it is stored under the uh, non-static pool area, and uh, while we while we declare the different variables with the same uh, just a minute so by using without using the new keyword, then that is uh, uh, stored inside the constant pool area. Okay, you you are talking about string right string literal and uh, normal string with object. What I'm asking you about is the memory like in JVM no uh, there are like uh -huh. four. Uh, segments like stack memory then static pool area heap area like that do you have any idea about it? Uh, yeah i have over a little about that that uh, in non-static pool area mm -hmm. it concerns uh, more memory as compared to constant pool area because uh, in constant pool area when we declare variable it will it will store in uh, only one variable only so it will consume the less memory as compared to non-static pool area but can you give an example uh sure sir so if we if we're declaring an integer a with the uh, uh, like uh, some value in numbers and uh, we are again again uh, declaring that integer by using the same variable so it will store inside the like uh, if we if we declare the new variable there like a new keyword there so it will store inside the uh, like non constant pool area mm -hmm. So it will consume more memory because it stores as a like uh, two variables there. It, it will store as a two in the non-constant pool area, sir. 
ओके तो बेसिकली इफ यू आर डिक्लेयरिंग इंटीजर ए हैविंग वैल्यू फाइव एंड इंटीजर बी हैविंग वैल्यू फाइव तो इट कुड लाइक डायरेक्टेड टू ओनली वन मेमरी ओके फाइव इज सेम बिकॉज द वैल्यू इज सेम बट वेन एवर यू आर डूइंग इट विथ न्यू की वर्ड दिस इज बेसिकली अपलिकेबल फॉर स्ट्रिंग सो लाइक स्ट्रिंग ए इज इक्व टू न्यू देन स्ट्रिंग एंड एन स्ट्रिंग यू आर पासिंग लेट से यूर नेम अमेर एंड देर इज अ स्ट्रिंग बी Mm-hmm. Where you are using new keyword and with string Amit. So this time there will be two objects will be created because we are using new keyword. New keyword, right? Yes. So this, mm-hmm. this is basically uh, related to non a uh, non constant pool area. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, now tell me uh, what is meant by casting? Yeah. Uh, ah yes, sir. In casting, or we can perf- uh, casting into the calling the uh, different methods by using. Up casting and down casting, so we can call the different methods in the super class to sub class, and we use it as a sub class by implementing you know, by changing the implementation of that particular method. Okay, and uh, then what is up casting? Uh, up casting to like up casting means sir, we uh, like uh, so when we uh, just think it, sir. Uh, uh, yeah, when we that we transfer over the methods. Like from the subclass to superclass, that is mm-hmm. called as upcasting basically. But prior to perform the upcasting, we firstly perform the uh, downcasting also, mm-hmm. because uh, first we need to call the superclass methods to the subclass. Then only we can perform the upcasting. Is downcasting uh, possible in Java? Uh, yes, sir. It is possible in Java. Yeah. Are you sure? Yes, sir. <laughs> so. डाउन कास्टिंग इज नॉट अलाउड इन जाओ ओके वॉट यू आर सेंग वॉज करेंट बट वाइल वेन एवर वी आर डूइंग अप कास्टिंग वी हैव टू डू वी हैव टू यूज इन हे रिटर्न लाइक सब क्लास वील एक्सेस प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ सुपर क्लास एंड दोज प्रॉपर्टीज विल ओनली गेट अप कास्टेड टू द सुपर क्लास सुपर क्लास राइट सर ओके इन एग्जाम्पल यू कैन गिव सर Uh, when we declare a class like a father, so we have something properties of that particular class father like money property or the like bikes or whatever it may be. Uh-huh. So if we want to call that particular properties into the subclass, then we can uh, we can use the help keyword extend. So it will extend the properties from the father class into the subclass. Okay. Whenever we use, uh, okay. Whenever we execute code in Selenium, if we want, uh, if I want to, you know, launch a browser, uh, what what are the steps? Uh, so for firstly, so first of all, we need to configure our browser to the Selenium by using the System dot set property or into inverted braces, uh, web driver dot Chrome driver. Or if we want to use the another browser, then we can give the particular name of that browser there. Okay. So what what is that code? Uh, which code, sir? Just you said after system dot set property. Ha! Uh, after system dot set property, the driver dot Chrome dot driver. Okay. Into uh into another uh, that inverted comma, we can give the uh, JAWS of the Chrome. We need to store uh, here into our local library. Okay. So we need to give the path of that local library to the that particular like uh, we need to give the path of the JAWS which we have stored in the local library there. Okay. After that, after that, we need to create the object of that particular driver by using the web driver uh, by uh, by using the web driver. So okay. we can create is like the web driver driver, which is a variable of that web driver is equal to new Chrome driver. Okay. If you want so to if, run, if you focus on this line, web driver hmm. driver is equal to new new Chrome driver. Okay. What is this? So basically, sir, it will use uh, by it is the it will store the basically properties of that Chrome driver to into that variable driver. So uh, after that, we can access that particular functionalities or particular methods by using the uh, by we can use the particular functionalities by using that uh, variable driver. So what sir. is the super class and sub class here? Uh-huh. So in this, sir. Um, Ah, uh, web driver is a super cluster, mm-hmm. and that uh, Chrome driver is uh, working as a uh, uh, sub cluster. And this is the example of uh, inheritance, single level inheritance. 
बट इन इनहेरिटेंस यू ओनली यूज एक्सटेंस के बताए हियर यू आर क्रिएटिंग अ रेफरेंस ऑफ योर सुपर क्लास राइट राइट सर देन एक्चुअली वेब ड्राइवर इज इंटर इंटरफेस इट इज इंटरफेस है आज यहां पर सो दिस इज द एग्जांपल ऑफ योर अप कास्टिंग वेयर यू आर यू सी द स्ट्रक्चर वेब ड्राइवर देन देयर इज अ ऑब्जेक्ट ड्राइवर इज इक्वल्स टू न्यू क्लोन ड्राइवर यस सर राइट राइट या दैट्स व्हाई आई आस्क यू ओके डू यू हैव एनी आइडिया अबाउट मेथड चेनिंग मेथड चेनिंग नो सर आई Rot of the term. Okay, so uh, okay, I'll ask you one quote from Selenium. If I want to maximize any browser, what is mm-hmm. the code? Um, uh, it codes like a driver dot handles dot windows dot maximize. Driver dot manage. Ah, uh, driver dot manage dot windows dot maximize. Maximize, right? Like right. driver dot manage. We have done maximize. Yes, sir. Right. This is the example of method chain. We call it as a method chain. So, okay. what is method chaining is whenever we are having any non-static member, we have to create an object. Okay. Right. So, right. in in this way, we may have to create multiple objects. So, to avoid this, what we do is we execute constructors of that particular class. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, instead of creating objects, we only use constructors. and we execute those class so once we execute the constructor whatever methods are there in that particular ka class will get mm-hmm. executed so instead of using object when we use mm-hmm. constructor that mm-hmm. is called as method chain okay so okay. okay and we use it very often right whenever like uh driver dot whenever we are using waits also yes sir and that time also we use method chain yes sir okay Now tell me, uh, what is meant by oops? Oops concept. So oops concept is basically uh, object-oriented programming, which is present inside the Java. So in oops concept, there are there are uh, different types like oops concept, like inheritance, you know, abstraction, encapsulation, and inheritance, as well as interface also. Okay. So first of all, inheritance is basically used to uh, reusability of the particular functionality. Okay. Uh, it is used by the uh, it is used in the it is present in inheritance. So after that, abstraction class is, uh, abstraction is a class in the Java, uh, which uh, which consists of um, different methods like static as well as non-static present inside a uh, non-static methods in the Java in the class. so to complete the abstraction abstraction class we need to provide uh, if we want to provide the definition to the incomplete classes present inside the abstract then we need to create the particular class which is known as concrete class mm-hmm. then afterwards it is a interface mm-hmm. so interface is a, a interface in interface there is a all methods are now all methods are now uh, all methods are incomplete so to provide the definition in uh, methods inside the uh, interface we need to create the class which is implementation class and after uh, the uh, encapsulation encapsulation is the uh, or like uh, i don't know uh, uh, oh sorry sir i don't remember encapsulation actually right no encapsulation is like you are encapsulating that particular variable or method sir your voice is breaking actually that something okay is it okay now hello no sir hello is it okay hi ah yes sir it is it is okay now okay so encapsulation means you are encapsulating that particular variable or method like inside the capsule we are having the medicine right yes. so there is a outer cover so what we do is we declare variables with private keyword now whenever we are using private keyword the scope is limited okay now we will use this variable under public methods so methods okay. are accessible outside mm-hmm. but that mm-hmm. variable is limited to that particular class so variable is hidden here or encapsulated okay that is why we called it as the encapsulation okay sir okay now tell me what is uh, uh, polymorphism you also there right ah uh, yes sir polymorphism is polymorphism is also that polymorphism means that the one one variable is showing the different functionalities like mm-hmm. uh, polymorphism deals with the terms like uh, method overloading and method overriding Mm-hmm. you can also call it as a compile time polymorphism and run time polymorphism okay. so basically in uh, method overloading what happens 
Now, when we may, when we declare the method by using the same name but uh, using the different variable, uh, it is uh, comes under the method overloading. So basically, uh, we can overload the uh, methods by in the in the same class and uh, in the by using the constructor also. And uh, you know, method overriding, uh, it is also considered as a method hiding also because in uh, when in, in method overriding, we can we can call the uh, properties of the another class in the class. Then it can by after changing the implementation, like uh, uh, we can use it as a, as a subclass property. So it is uh, known as method overriding. Okay. Uh, do you have any idea about method hiding? Ah uh, yes, sir. Method hiding is uh, also known as the method overriding. Sir. How come? Uh, sure. Yes. So, uh, if we if we acquire the properties from the super class into the subclass, mm -hmm. then uh, we can we can after changing the implementation of that uh, uh methods, uh, we can show so uh, we can show then show that method as a subclass of the properties of the subclass. Mm -hmm. So. This is the example of the method hiding set. So we can completely hiding the proper. We can completely hiding the superclass. So that's why this is the example of okay. method hiding. Okay, okay. Let me uh, like tell you this. So okay. method overloading you stated correctly. Even uh, method overriding was correct. About mm -hmm. method hiding. Now yeah. method overloading is applicable for static or non-static members. Uh, in method uh, overriding, it is non-static method. Sir. Method overloading. Uh, we can load the non the static members method also. Method overload. Uh, sorry, method overload. Okay. So method overloading is applicable for static and non static members. Yes, sir. But the scope is limited to that particular class only. Okay. Right? In right. Me method overriding, we are accessing uh, methods from superclass to subclass. Right, sir. But this is applicable for non static members only. Yes. Now, if you want to do or you want to access static members of superclass to subclass, oh, no. that time we use method hiding because static methods cannot be overwrite. Yes, sir. Because we cannot create object of that particular method because it's a static. Static method, right? Right. So, whenever we are acquiring properties of superclass, static pop properties of superclass to subclass, mm -hmm. that concept is known as method hiding. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about what is the uh, interface and abstract class difference between both. Interface and abstract class. Okay. So in the interface, there are all methods present, which is non-static, and these all methods complete. Uh, incomplete methods are present in that interface. And in the abstract class, it is uh, static as well as non-static methods are present. So some methods are complete, or some methods are not complete in the abstract class. Mm -hmm. So to complete the to provide the definition present uh, to to provide the definition in the method present in the interface, so we need to create the uh, separate another class which is known as implementation class, and uh, to provide the definition methods present inside the abstract class, we need to provide the separate class which is the uh, uh, which class is called as concrete class. Uh, yeah. Uh, so in the uh, uh -huh. So in 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 order to in order to consider that abstract class to come if we want to complete the methods from the in the in the concrete class, uh, we need to provide the keyword which is extend, and uh, to provide the definition in the implementation class, we use the keyword implements. Okay. Uh, can we overload the constructor? Ah uh, yes, sir. We can overload the constructor. Can we override the constructor? Uh, no, sir, we cannot override the constructor. Why? Uh, because the constructor is the... We can call the constructor inside the same method only. So, we cannot call in a different class. Yeah, so we can call the constructor in same class only because... Same class, yes. Na uh, constructor itself is based on the name of the class, right? Yes, we, yes. Whenever we are overriding it, so we'll uh, we will be uh, trying to access it into different class and it will search right. for the class name which will be different right yes right that's why we can overload the constructor but we cannot we cannot override the constructor override the construction oh, okay okay good now uh, let's move to selenium yeah <clears throat> uh, tell me what is the difference between web driver and web element 
Uh, so they basically use that the find element method to locate locate elements, right? So find element will use to locate a single element. But if there are like similar element, for example, right. on Amazon you are searching iPhone. Mm -hmm. So a results will be from iPhone 12, 13, 14, multiple iPhones will come, right? Right. Now if you want to save this list, how how can we do that? By using the method find elements. Find elements method. So what will be the return type of find elements? No, sir, I don't. Return type is list only. <laughs> you are storing list of yeah, elements, yeah, right? Yes, sir, yes, sir. That will, we will store in, inside the variable list, that, right? Correct. So, return type will be list. List. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, can you tell me what is the difference between a list and uh, set? Uh, yes, sir. So, list and set basically, <clears throat> these are the sub interfaces present inside the class in a collection interface. Mm -hmm. So in the list, um, there is a. Uh, I will basically tell you the difference between the list and set. So mm -hmm. in list, there is a my null values are not allowed. So as well as in the set, uh, it also not allows the null values. In list, it uh, it will maintain the flow of execution, um, okay. while in the set, that uh, flow of execution is not maintained. Okay. Uh, basically, set is a um, uh, little bit of advance as compared to the list. Mm -hmm. uh, a list contains the method, uh, different classes like uh, link list, mm -hmm. uh, vectors, and uh, link list vectors. And one more is there, sir. Mm -hmm. And in a state where it consists the different classes like uh, hash set, tree set, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, yeah, sir. What about but, duplication? Uh, yes, sir. In uh, in lift, mm -hmm. we, we will allow the duplicate values. In set, we will we are not allowed the duplicate values. Uh, in list, it is allowed the null values. While in set, they not allowed the null okay. values. Correct. So, uh, can we use uh, both in combination? List and set. Uh, no, sir. We can use only one at a time. So, uh, we can do that. What okay? okay. Uh, let me ask you. Do you remember the code for get window handles? How to use get window handles method? Uh, no sir. So code goes like array list, then uh, data type of that. Let us say string array list string. Then we will have the object. Let us say window equals to new array list string. Then driver dot get window handles. Okay. This is the overall code. Now we are using array list here, right? Yes. Yes sir. And a return type of gate window handles is set. Okay. Now, advantage of this using this both is set will not allow duplication of the uh, data. And list is having method get. Okay. So when we are we are having multiple members by using get method and providing index, we can easily fetch that particular data, like three number of URL you want or fifth number of URL you want. So, by using get method of list, we can do that easily. Okay, sir. Oh, okay. Um, what are locators in Selenium? Oh, yes, sir. Locator basically they use they are used to identify the particular web element. Mm -hmm. So, there are eight types of locators, uh, which is ID, name, tag name, class, class name, uh, link test, partial link test, CSS, and XPath. Okay. And what are the different types of XPath? Uh, there are basically four, six types of XPaths, which is XPath by attribute, XPath by index, XPath by text, XPath by uh, contains, mm -hmm. and then well, two more is there, which is empty XPath and absolute XPath. Okay, which is faster uh, locator? ID is the fastest locator, sir. ID or CSS selector? No, sir, ID is the fastest. Okay, ID is the fastest. In CSS selector also, you can go with the ID. Yes, so, yes. Work that together. Okay. Uh, what is the difference between relative and absolute XPath? Uh, yes, sir. In uh, absolute XPath, sir, we will... Uh, absolute XPath basically goes like uh, from the parent node to immediate child node. And in the absolute uh, relative XPath, we will go from that uh, particular parent node to the any child node. 
so to navigate from the uh, parent to uh, parent to child we will uh, we will use the forward slash single forward slash in absolute expert mm-hmm. while using the double forward slash in the relative expert so as uh, as we know that the absolute expert goes from the immediate, uh, parent to immediate child so it becomes very lengthy to uh, perform the certain actions which is present inside the uh, like uh, long down from the parent pod mm-hmm. while in the uh, while, while as compared to uh, absolute expert relative expert is much more easier than uh, much more easier to uh, navigate from parent node to child node any child yeah and it is it is little bit faster also yes so this just keep the middle body and it directly jumps to the child yes sir yes and we can use it to handle dynamic elements also right right sir. how can we do that uh we can so one what is meant by a uh, dynamic wave elements a uh, dynamic wave element sir that uh, the locator of that particular element is not fixed it will it is changing after the regular interval of time mm-hmm. or uh, it will change again and again uh, so it is the wave element the locator of that is not fixed Oh, and how can I handle it? Oh, uh, actually, sir, uh, the concept is much not much clear about with me, but I will okay. try. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can handle the dynamic wave element by using the like a uh, uh, preceding and uh, like yes, sir. So, uh, dynamic wave element can be handled by using two methods. One is we are having X path with contents, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, for a dynamic uh, wave element, its X path will be will change all the time. Whenever we are refreshing the page or it's getting reloaded, the uh, X path will change. But there is a some part of the X path which will be constant, and maybe the last part or the extension of that X path will change, right? So, yes. in, um, by using X path with contains, we can mention the constant part of that particular X path, and we can find out that particular wave element. Okay. Second, second method we can u- use is. earlier you just explained a relative x path mm-hmm. so in relative x path what we do is we jump from parent to child so even if you know parent of that particular wave element we can find mm-hmm. out that wave element okay okay so these are the two mm-hmm. methods by which we can handle a dynamic wave elements yes sir and okay. that uh, like pre you know you know sir that is in the for loop sorry <laughs> okay so um Last question for Selenium is uh, how to handle iframes. Ah uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> we can handle the iframe by using the methods called uh, parent. Ah, uh, just a minute, sir. Sir, uh-huh. uh, first we need to adjust the uh-huh. focus from main frame to that iframe. Uh-huh. For that, there is a method called our uh, uh, uh-huh. switch. Oh, so driver dot switch to frame. We can uh, do, first we need to switch focus of selenium from the web page to the iframe, right? Iframe, right, sir. Yeah. So we can pass index of that iframe or maybe tag name or what is the x path uh, x path of that frame, uh-huh. and we can switch focus to iframe. Uh-huh. Then by using uh, like there are multiple methods default or parent frame, we can switch from current frame to the parent frame or parent frame to the current frame. Current default. Frame. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. That's very big thing. Okay, now let's talk about manual. Yes. Hmm. What is the difference between functional and non-functional testing? Ah, uh, basically, sir, in functional testing, we check the like uh, functionalities of a particular software. Hmm. In the non-functional testing, we check the ah uh, like it is working or uh, working fine or not, sir. By using the different coverages. Okay, and uh, in functionality we use like uh, we use different domains which are uh, uh, calculation based coverage, uh, calculation yeah, sorry, uh, calculation error handling, hmm, mm. uh, like uh, just a minute sir, um, yeah, behavior coverage, input domain coverage, calculation based coverage, uh, error handling coverage. Uh, service level coverage, backend coverage, and yeah, this it comes under the functional testing. Mm-hmm. And in the non-functional testing, there are uh different coverages like like should should I switch? Should I? Hey sir, will do any like that, sir? Me. 
नाही नाही बरोबर फंक्शनल इज करेक्ट इनपुट डोमेन्टिंग एरर हँडलिंग इज दॅट इज करेक्ट वॉट अबाउट नॉन फंक्शनल नॉन फंक्शनल तर वी यूज डिफरंट कलर इज लाईक टेस्टिंग वी बेसिकली परफॉर्म द नॉट टेस्ट नॉन फंक्शनल विच इज मिळतात ग्लोबलायझेशन टेस्टिंग इंटर सिस्टम टेस्टिंग इंटर सिस्टम टेस्टिंग पॅरल टेस्टिंग सॅनिटेशन टेस्टिंग अँड येस सर ओके सो सी वेन एव्हर द क्वेश्चन कम्स लाईक वॉट इज द डिफरन्स बिटवीन फंक्शनल अँड नॉन फंक्शनल टेस्टिंग ओके सो फंक्शनल टेस्टिंग वॉट एव्हर कवरेजेस आर देअर बट इन फंक्शनल टेस्टिंग वी कवर वॉट आर ऑल द फंक्शनॅलिटीज इन दॅट पर्टिक्युलर अप्लिकेशन that web application okay so if there is a amazon website then you can log in into it you can buy that particular product you can do uh, you know payment or you use multiple functionalities multiple models present on that particular mm-hmm. website so that is the part of functional testing in non functional testing we check like its performance its dependency so how it is performing according to number of users if number of users are more how it is performing mm-hmm. then we are having inter system testing where we check if it is communicating with any other application so whenever we are doing payment we are using phone pay which is another application we are using amazon pay net banking testing yes mm-hmm. yeah so in functional we only focus on functionality of that particular website in non functional we are focusing on external factors which will affect that particular application okay okay yeah okay. now uh uh what is the format of test case you use or for writing a test case is what are different attributes you mention well uh, in test case sir we generally use the test case id description mm-hmm. uh prerequisite mm-hmm. and uh, steps to follow uh, expected outcome uh, actual outcome and uh, comment or which is the pass or fail result which it is there sir wow and if uh, we can also uh, okay we can link it to defect also if any test case is failing then we can mm-hmm. add a defect id also okay okay uh what is a test plan and test strategy uh in test plan sir we basically uh you know in agile methodology we follow the test plan in a test plan we basically uh, create a overall overall plan for the particular sprint mm-hmm. uh in that uh, we distribute the work among the resources uh the resources present Mm-hmm. so yes sir, this is comes under the test plan and what uh, what is another for test strategy yeah so st- in stress uh, test strategy sir uh, we basically decide the how many percentage of uh, that particular functionality we need to test by manually and uh, how many percentage we need to automate that particular functionality and what will be our what will be the our approach towards the testing so it comes under the test strategy who will prepare test strategy test strategy is prepared by the uh, team leader not about test plan uh test plan is uh, also pro- uh, also prepared by the team leader yes both will be prepared by team leader yes sir so test strategy is the responsibility of project manager not team leader okay okay If team lead will do everything so what will project manager do right so test strategy test methodology those are responsibilities of your project manager while test plan will be created by your lead okay okay now tell me what is the difference between a sprint and product backlog sprint backlog product backlog uh sprint backlog is basically uh, uh yes sir when the uh, when ba will collect all the information from the client then we will prepare a document which is known as the sprint backlog in agile methodology and uh, product backlog means sir it we t- it has all the information regarding the testing so he will dictate that information among the resources product backlog will contain overall information of the project, project. overall requirement of the project while sprint backlog will have user stories or we can say specific requirement for that particular project yes. okay okay module wise yes sir okay mm-hmm. what are different authorizations we use in api 
Uh, este de ridă atâta ce sunt like basic art. Mm-hmm. Uh, like O, art to 1.0, art to 1.0, art to 1.0, 1.0 and 2.0, 1.0 and 2.0. more is there, sir. Bearer token, yes, it's a bearer token, right, sir. API key is there. Ah, bearer token, API key is basic auth, auth 1.0, auth 2.0. Okay. Which authorization do you use in your organization? We use a bearer token, sir. Bearer token. Uh, so, uh, there are two types of bearer token, right? Static and dynamic. Yes, sir. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, static bearer token means sir that uh, that uh, the value present inside the bearer token is uh, remains the constant, mm-hmm. while in the dynamic it will change. What value changes or token changes? Token value changes, sir. Okay. When will it change? Uh. Sorry, sir, not much. So basically, it. static token you can use for longer period of time. Okay. It's just like uh, you know your uh, mobile password. Mm, yes. Yeah, that is static. You can use it for years. Mm. Dynamic token is like a OTP, which will have some time limitation. It will expire after maybe one minute or two minute like that. Okay. Mm. So okay. whenever like we are working on APIs, a dynamic tokens have validity up to fifteen minutes. 15 to 30 minutes. Okay. So you can use that particular token for 15 to 30 minutes. After that, it will expire. You will have to create another token. Another token. Right. Okay. 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 Last question for you from database. Uh, what are the different uses of alter command? Uh, alter command. We can, uh, by using the alter command, we can, uh, like, we can manipulate our data. By using the alter commands, mm-hmm. it it comes under the data manipulation language. So, in order to change the data, we will mm-hmm. also use the <coughs> insert uh, insert command is there. That update command is there also. Alter is the DTL or D- DML. Alter is the sir uh, DML data manipulation. Sure. Oh yes, sir. Paka. <laughs> uh, so it comes under the DL, data definition it, language. Data definition language, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In DML, we are having select, insert, right? Absolutely. Delete and delete, right? Sir. Yeah. yeah. So, what can we use it for? Alter command. Oh, sorry, sir. So, whenever we have to add a particular column, or change data type of, of that particular column. We have to drop any particular column. Mm-hmm. Right? So, whatever structure level changes are there, any changes mm-hmm. you want to do with the table and not with the data, that time you will go for alter command. Okay? okay. If you want to do anything with the data, we are having DML like update is, we are having select, mm-hmm. insert, update, delete, those we can use. Okay. Okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, so you need to work on your database. Database, yes, sir. Oh, um, okay. And uh, Selenium queries also. Yes, sir. They, 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 they